I'm Rick Johansson, and this is Iron Echo Design. Inkscape can help you make complicated designs easily. And in today's beginner intermediate tutorial, we're gonna do some vector tie dye. It's easy and a whole lot less messy. We're gonna use the Create Tiled Clones tool and we'll make something very simple, just like this. I'll show you the steps each and every setting. So you can just do one click, sit back, and you got your tie-dye. No sticky fingers, no mess, and you can do unlimited colors. If you're new to Inkscape, I'll walk you through the absolute basics on tiled clones and show you how it works, break it down for you. If you know this already, skip ahead to the actual design portion where we set up the shapes, punch in the settings, and do the one-click tie-dye. And at the very end, I'll show you how easy it is to swap out the colors and try all sorts of different looks. Starting at the beginning, I have a yellow circle here, and you wanna go to Edit, Clone, Create Tiled Clones. That's gonna push open a menu on the side here. And the first tab, it starts with P1, simple translation. For today, keep it at that. Go down here, it says apply to tiled clones, rows, columns. Let's do one row and we'll do 10 columns. Over here, create, and there you go. Actually, the original is always underneath. This is the original and these are the 10 clones. The cool part about the clone feature is if I change the original, Go to the fill and stroke menu, they all change together. If you change the size, they all change. Stretch it, whatever you do to the original plays out with the clones. Make another, back to the create tiled clones. Let's go to the shift tab. For today's exercise, we're only going to worry about the column. Don't worry about the per row. So looking at per column, let's shift it over 100% create. All that did was shift it over by one unit. So if this is one, that's the amount it shifted over. Reset that. Take it back to zero. So there's going to be no shift. Let's go to scale. How about we shrink each of the iterations by 10%? To do that on the per column, scale X by negative 10, and you have to also do the scale Y, negative 10, create. It reduces its size by 10% in each column till you get down to a little dot. Moving on to the rotation tab, this is what we're going to be using for the tie-dye spiraling effect. But if we use this circle example, the rotation will look like nothing. So here is a rectangle, same settings, P1, shifting nothing for now, scaling down 10%. Why don't we rotate it by 10 degrees? One by 10, create. Interestingly enough, this is 10, 20, 30, 40, all the way to 90 degrees, and so it's 90 degrees, if you can see that. I did do a couple other tutorials on this where we actually spun shapes. Here's a hexagon with some rounded corners. I'm showing it here now because it has the last relevant piece of the puzzle here. We don't wanna send our rotation outward. We wanna have it spin in place. And there's an easy way to do that. I have this hexagon selected. If you're on the per column on the shift tab, you can hit this button, exclude tile right here. And that's gonna say, don't shift it at all, just spin it in place. For the scale, let's do negative three. Rotation, three degrees, and rows column will do 15. Create, look at that. This is a nice call back to that tutorial. I think it was sticker offset or one-click settings. Check it out if you wanna make these. And that is all that you need to know for Create Tiled Clones to do tie-dye. People are gonna mention with Inkscape 1.2, they did make a tiling path effect feature. It has some very good capabilities, but I still like having the full control of all these different tabs for this application. If you skipped ahead to the design process, here we are. Let's set up our document properties, file, document properties. I am on the format A4 for the page settings. You can work with any template you want, but choosing A4 will keep us all at the same scale and size ratio if you're gonna follow along. I brought in a color palette here. If you want these exact colors, screenshot it or check out in the description, I'll have the color codes. And at the end, like I mentioned, we'll mix it up with a different color palette for a different look. When I was looking at different methods to approach this challenge, my first instinct was using the watercolor effect, but I couldn't get Inkscape to play along because it kept crashing before I could modify it. The good part was sometimes when there's a limitation, it forces you to try something else, which led me to just using the plain old draw calligraphic and brush strokes. It's this tool right here. Hit that once. The default is going to be dip pen. Hit the delta and go down to splotch. 
Usually the preset is 100 millimeters for the width. Change that to 50 millimeters. Thinning at 30 is okay. Change that also to 50. I'll explain that in a second. Mass zero, fixation zero, caps one, tremor, keep it at 10, wiggle, nothing. Don't be concerned if it changes over to no preset. That's just the nature of the tool. Click and drag and you've got this type of action. There's no precise way to create this blob of ink or dye. Start with just a slow drag, then speed up, then slow. Something like that. It doesn't have to be perfect. This middle part, the higher the number in thinning, the more it will thin with speed. If you don't have your fill and stroke menu, it's under object fill and stroke. Back on the fill tab, I will cheat an eyedropper on this yellow, slightly different. I can scale it down. Take a look at this part. This part's kind of key. If you double click on it, you'll see all the nodes pop up. Or if it's selected, click on the edit paths by node tool. I want it to end in a point because that's what tie dye kind of looks like. Double click somewhere on the end and drag it out. If you take this handle, you can modify it so it becomes more pointed. And the point at the very tip, you can turn that to get something sharp at the end. Doesn't have to be exact. Tie dye is very organic. Double click on it again. With all my nodes, I can highlight over some of the nodes. You can drag it, reduce it, or with the arrow keys and the keyboard, I can bring it closer to that, the front part of the shape. Resize this a touch. Control D will duplicate it. First, I'll change the color to, let's see, this next one. And I want the point to overlap somewhere in the middle of this splotch. Move it over. Let's duplicate this one. Oh, I've got a transparency issue. I can see a little bit of transparency. If you're on the fill and stroke menu with the color wheel, down here, this is the alpha or transparency. Make sure they're all full. Hmm. For the third one, we'll make that blue. Don't overlap the blue. Let it go near, but don't touch. Grab your Bezier pen tool. Today, all we need to do is make a triangle. It also adopts the last color that you used. Let's change it to this red. Just grab anywhere in between these two nodes, drag it in, bubble this out a tiny bit, drag this one in. The most important thing to remember right now is it has to be on top for hierarchy. It has to be over all of these, somewhere over the blue, close to the first red. We can move it once we spin it and you'll see why it's there. Based on the tiled clone settings we're gonna set up, this is the length you wanna be. Oh, we forgot to put the point on the end here. There you go. Collect everything again, control G to group it. Very last modification, go up to filters, blurs, blur. You'll get a dialog box here. We'll just do a vertical blur. Very, very minimal, 0 0.50, apply. I think I'll keep this one up here so we remember what we started with. Control D will duplicate it. Time for the tiled clones. Edit, clone, create tiled clones. Here's your menu. Symmetry, P1, simple translation. Shift for the column, exclude tile is selected. Scale, we only need a negative 0.75. That's for the scale X, for scale Y on the column still, negative 0.75, same thing. Rotation per column, 5.5. Five. And because we want some natural variation, we'll do randomize 5.0. Down on rows, columns, one row, 150 columns. Ready? Create. Look at that. <laughs> it's pretty close. I was going to modify this, but that is, that is what I was looking for. Let me still show you how you can modify this if you want. You see how the bounding box is there? That's showing our original. I'll move it up here. The absolute best part about doing this method with clones, you can change the colors, you can change the shapes. Watch the freedom this gives us. If I take the blue and I shrink it, make it thinner, the whole thing gets thinner. Do you like it like that? Do you want it thicker? Maybe that's what you're going for. Move it out. You're in full control. I love this method. You can even add other things. Let's go to a circle. I put the red circle at the tip. See what happens. There it goes. It spirals over the whole thing. I'm gonna save this file, save. Play around with it. Do we want that red dot? Maybe not. Watch how easy it is to change colors. Select the original. You can go to fill and stroke menu and change it at will. Or if you have a premeditated color down here, click on it and do that for each of your 
colors. Well, there you go. There's how you can do tie-dye with Inkscape if you're in the mood to let your imagination go. Thanks a lot for the suggestion. If you have things you want to see done in Inkscape or questions, or if you can't figure this out, let me know in the comments and see you next time.